Biden administration uh, is trying to stop Texas. His razor wire, the shipping containers, and the other barriers are having a meaningful impact. Are they going to go to Texas? Are they going to go elsewhere? Uh, they will know the wrong place to go is the state of Texas. The border situation in Texas has been a hot topic of debate and controversy in the United States, especially in the last few months. The state has been facing an unprecedented influx of migrants, mostly from Central America, who are seeking asylum or a better life in the U.S. The federal government and the state government have clashed over how to handle this crisis with different approaches and policies that often contradict and conflict with each other. One of the major points of contention is the amount of money that Texas is spending to make sure that its border operations run smoothly. The state has allocated billions of dollars to fund its own border security initiatives, such as deploying state troopers, National Guard members, and a new Texas tactical border force to deter and arrest migrants, as well as building a state-funded border wall. But perhaps the most controversial and provocative move by the state is its migrant transportation strategy, which involves sending migrants to other parts of the country, especially to what they call sanctuary cities. So what exactly is going on in Texas and what does this mean for the state and the nation? How are the sanctuary cities reacting to the influx of migrants and what are the legal and humanitarian implications of the state's actions? What are the motives and goals of the governor and how are they affecting his political standing and prospects? Join us as we discuss how the Texas governor is sending immigrants to these sanctuary cities. Texas has always had to deal with immigration issues. In October of 2005, Texas Governor Rick Perry traveled to the border city of Laredo and announced Operation Linebacker, a new initiative that he said would protect the state's residents from terrorist groups such as Al-Qaeda. He claimed that such terrorist groups, along with drug cartels and gangs, were attempting to exploit the U.S.-Mexico border, posing a grave threat to the national security and public safety of Texas and the United States. Without pointing to evidence, Perry said, said that after the September 11, 2001 attacks, criminal organizations could import terror, illegal narcotics, and weapons of mass destruction. He cited reports of al-Qaeda operatives being arrested in Mexico and of Hezbollah cells operating in South America. A press release from the governor's office said Perry warned that the border was a gateway for terrorists and their weapons to enter our country. Perry said Texas would step in to fill the gaps left by the federal government, which he accused of being negligent and incompetent in securing securing the border. He said that he would increase state law enforcement presence along the border and provide new investigative tools such as surveillance cameras, helicopters, and boats. He stopped short of directly attacking President George W. Bush or the Republican-led Congress, but he implied that they were not doing enough to address the border crisis. The state of Texas cannot wait for the federal government to implement needed border security measures, Perry said, explaining that the state would use $10 million in funding that would include federal grants for the operation. Two months later, the governor highlighted his border security efforts while announcing his re-election campaign, portraying himself as a strong leader who could defend Texas from external threats. Over the next 17 years, Perry and his successor, Governor Greg Abbott, persuaded the Texas legislature to spend billions of dollars on border security measures that included at least nine operations and several smaller initiatives. Each time, the governors promised that the state would do what the federal government had failed to do, secure the border. They said that they would deploy more state troopers, National Guard troopers, and local law enforcement officers to patrol the border and arrest illegal immigrants, drug smugglers, and human traffickers. They also said that they would build more fences, barriers, and checkpoints along the border and enhance cooperation and coordination among different agencies and jurisdictions. The pronouncements often coincided with other gubernatorial campaigns or times when there were considerable bids for higher office. Perry and Abbott also ramped up their political attacks on the federal government during periods when Democrats held the presidency or a majority in Congress. They blamed the Obama and Biden administrations for creating a humanitarian and and security crisis at the border by adopting policies that they said encouraged illegal immigration such as DACA, asylum, and family reunification. They also criticized the government for suing Texas over its border security laws such as SB4, which banned sanctuary cities and required local officials to cooperate with federal immigration authorities. After launching Operation Lone Star in March of 2021, Abbott claimed that the initiative would combat the smuggling of people and drugs into Texas. He said that the operation
operation would target the criminal organizations that were profiting from the human misery and suffering of the migrants and that the state would not tolerate any violations of its laws and sovereignty. About four months later, the governor also directed state police and the National Guard to arrest some migrant men on criminal trespass charges for crossing the border through private property. He said that the state had secured the consent of hundreds of landowners along the border who had complained of damage and disruption caused by the migrants. He said that the state had built temporary jail facilities to detain the migrants who would face up to a year in prison and a $4,000 fine. The governor also started busing migrants who were processed and released by the federal government to Washington, D.C., New York, and other states on a voluntary basis. He said that the state was overwhelmed by the number of migrants that the federal government was releasing into Texas without providing adequate resources or support. He mentioned that the state was spending millions of dollars on providing food, shelter, health care, and transportation for the migrants while the federal government was shirking its responsibility. He said that both measures were in response to the Biden administration's decision to bring an end in May to Title 42, a pandemic-era emergency health order under which most migrants, including those seeking asylum, could be immediately turned away from the border. He said that the decision was reckless and irresponsible and that it had triggered a humanitarian and security crisis at the border. Frustrated by these rogue buses from Texas dropping off migrants by the thousands, the mayors of New York, Chicago, and Denver are trying to slow the surge by requiring the bus operators to coordinate arrivals under the threat of impound, fined, and even jail time. They said that the buses were arriving without notice or coordination, creating chaos and confusion in their cities. They said that the buses were violating their local ordinances and regulations, such as parking, traffic, and public health rules. They said that the buses were also endangering the safety and well-being of the migrants who were often left without proper guidance or assistance. They said that they were not opposed to welcoming the migrants, but they needed more communication and cooperation from the state of Texas and the federal government. Earlier this year, 14 busloads of migrants from Texas made their way to New York City, the highest total recorded since spring of 2022. Mayor Eric Adams said, citing the city's Asylum Seeker Arrival Center. At the direction of Governor Greg Abbott, the Lone Star our state has bussed over 90,000 migrants to sanctuary cities run by Democrats like Washington, D.C., New York City, Chicago, Philadelphia, Denver, and Los Angeles since April of 2022, according to numbers released by the governor's office in January. He said that the state was sending the migrants to the cities that had declared themselves as sanctuaries for undocumented immigrants and that had criticized his border security measures. He said that the state was giving the migrants a choice of where they wanted to go and that many of the people preferred to go to the cities that offered more benefits and protections. He said that the state was also sending a message to the federal government and the American people that the border crisis was not a Texas problem, but a national problem. In justifying the busing of migrants who crossed the southern border, Abbott in a statement last year said, it was just Texas and Arizona that bore the brunt of all the chaos and problems that come with it. He said that the two border states had been left alone to deal with the consequences of the federal government's failure to secure the border and enforce the immigration laws. He said that the two states had been spending billions of dollars on border security while the federal government has been ignoring or undermining their efforts. He said that the two states had also been suffering from the social and economic impacts of the influx of migrants such as increased crime, drug trafficking, public health risks, and strained public services. Now, the rest of America can understand exactly what's going on, he said. He said that by busing the migrants to other states, he was exposing the reality and the magnitude of the border crisis and forcing the federal government and other states to take action and responsibility. He said that he was also challenging the hypocrisy and the double standards of sanctuary cities, which he said were quick to criticize his policies but slow to help the migrants. He said that he was also giving the migrants a chance to pursue their American dream in the cities that claim to welcome and support them. Leaders of those cities experiencing an influx in migrants have been grappling with how to accommodate them upon their arrival. They said that they were facing a difficult and complex situation that required required compassion and collaboration. They said that they were trying to balance the needs and rights of the migrants with the interest and concerns of their own residents. In December of 2023, Texas also flew out over 120 immigrants from El Paso to Chicago. For New York City Mayor Eric Adams and his big city counterparts, Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson and Denver Mayor Mike Johnston, there's much more to the issue than coordinating bus drop-offs. The three mayors are collectively calling for additional federal support to manage the influx of migrants migrants, calling it a national humanitarian crisis that demands a national solution. They argue that the federal government has the primary
primary responsibility and authority to deal with the immigration matters and that it should provide more resources and guidance to the states and cities that are affected by the border crisis. They also urge the federal government to reform the immigration system and create a pathway to citizenship for the millions of undocumented immigrants who are already living in the country. Our cities are working shoulder to shoulder to support newcomers, but it's time for the federal government to increase work authorization, create a coordinated entry strategy, and provide more federal dollars to ensure cities can manage this crisis and help newcomers thrive, Johnston said in a joint online statement this week. The statement also highlighted the economic and social benefits of welcoming migrants, such as increasing the labor force, diversifying the culture, and enriching the communities. According to Renee Ease, a spokesperson for Abbott, the mayors are going to extreme lengths to avoid fulfilling their self-declared sanctuary city promises. Instead of attacking Texas's efforts to provide relief to our overwhelmed border communities, these Democrat mayors should call on their party leader, finally do his job and secure the border, something he continues refusing to do. Ease accused the mayors of being hypocritical and irresponsible and of putting their political agenda above the welfare of their citizens and the nation. She also claimed that the migrants pose a threat to public health and safety and that the state has the right and duty to protect its borders and sovereignty. The mayors have responded to the criticism by defending their stance and actions and by challenging the legality and morality of the state's migrant transportation strategy. They have asserted that they are following federal law and the Constitution and that they are honoring their values and principles as sanctuary cities. They have also questioned the motives and goals of the governor and accused him of using the migrants as pawns and scapegoats to advance his political career and agenda. What do you think about this situation? Let us know in the comments section.